Hello everyone, it's Katrius here and I welcome you to another video. This time we're looking at some Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I'm actually hyped. Yes, something very rare has happened. I'm hyped for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, there's another new archetype coming out called Exor Sisters, and honestly they look quite interesting. So interesting in fact that I might even dabble into them. So let's first just read one of the cards so we can get or rather, let's read two of the cards so we can get a feel for it. First start we got Exor Sister uh, Elise, level 4 light spell caster, and it's got two effects. First off, if you have already if you already control Exor Sister, you can special summon her from your hand. And if you control Exor Sister Stella specifically, you gain 800 LP. Then, if any card leaves any graveyard by an opponent's card, you can special summon one Exor Sister Exes monster from your deck by using this card you control as an Exes material. This is a trigger effect, which means you can also use it on the opponent's turn. Next up, we've got Stella. And she can special summon one extra sister from your hand. Then if you control Elise, you gain 800 during your main phase. So she has to be able to feel for that. And she has the same second effect as Elise. So this is going to be a recurring theme. The other two monsters will also have that very same effect. Uh, Elaine, as, a, as her first effect, can um, return one extra sister card in your hand to the bottom of the deck and draw one card. And if you control Sophia, you gain 800. And Sophia can just make you draw one card if you control another extra sister. And if you control a lane, you gain 800. These are the basic extra sister monsters. And while they are very simple by design, I really like how they, how they already look to play. Of course, you would always play free Stella and two to three... Uh, yeah, you would play play free Stella and free Elise in every deck you want to play Exorcisters in. But I am generally interested in spellcaster archetypes because I like to try things with uh, with witchcrafters and all those kind of things. So this is very interesting to me personally, and their gimmick of having this kind of effect that you can quickly summon an Exorcist, Exorcist or Exorcist monster. That when the opponent uh, accesses the graveyard is interesting as hell. Now, what actually is the payoff though? Well, Mikaelis is the first of, uh, of the four Xyz monsters we're going to look at, which is a light warrior Xyz monster with two level four monsters as a re requirement, except you usually summon her with uh, the regular things, but this can come in handy. First off, if this card was Xyz summoned previously this turn by using an extra system on this material, you can target one card your opponent controls or in the graveyard banish it as a quick effect, which is very good to get disruption of your opponent's turn after you summon this. It cannot be destroyed by battle over once a special summon from a graveyard, and this you can do at any time, but it's once per turn. You can detach one material from this card and add one extra system spell trap from a deck to the head. This is especially important because it opens up some uh, some more proactive plays later. But I am gonna I'm gonna say that when it gets to it. But I've got Caspatel, 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 which when exists uh, summoned by an Exorcist monster as a material, neither player can special summon monsters from any graveyard anymore, which is incredible. Especially if you factor in decks like uh, Dragon Link still existing, or Prank Kid still existing, who also like a, a Graveyard Summon from what I know. Or if... I think Eldritch doesn't work that well with that? I don't think Eldritch isn't even in the meta, I haven't played for a long time. But this is a very strong effect. Also, um, this has the reverse effect of um, Mikali's Caspatel will add you an Exorcist a monster from a deck to your head. Also very strong, because with her, if you get to summon her, you can you can tutor out Elise. And by tutoring out Elise, you can special summon her. You don't get the 800 because you don't control Stella. And then you can make any Link to play you want. Except this is a warrior and Elise is a, so, a spellcaster. So I don't know if you specifically want this. But hey, there is an option for a play there. 
I just wanted to point that out. Next up, we've got Jabrine. And, oh yeah, she also cannot be destroyed by battle with monsters, especially on a graveyard. I think that's the same for everyone. Oh no, this is just activated monsters, monster effects from a graveyard. So if uh, Jabrine was summoned this turn using an extra system monsters and material, you can target one effect monster and negate its effects. It's basically uh, RDA Abyss for the turn she was Xyz summoned by using an extra system monsters material. Which is incredibly strong. And she can detach one Xyz material from this card and for the rest of the turn all Xyz monsters gain will gain 800 attack. Which includes mo Xyz monsters you summon later. This is somewhat of a weak effect, but it also supports OTKing. So it's not actually that bad. Like, imagine you have this and a uh, Time Thief uh, Redoer. You just give it 800 attack, but he's at 3200 attack, which is massive. Imagine a 3.2k Redoer. Gee, mate. And uh, last but not least, we've got Usofio. And, uh, yeah, she's basically Dweller for the turn. She was summoned from a graveyard, uh, summoned by using an extra system monster. Also, can be destroyed by activated monster effects. And, um, she can. Which, which is a effect for your turn. I mean, obviously, you can only use it in your turn. But it's a nice removal effect to bounce a monster. It targets, sadly, which makes it rather weak. But it's still a bounce, not a destruction, which is incredibly good. Next up, we've got the card I wanted to wait for before I talk about... Um, before I talk about Mikaelis's last effect. Exorcister Amento. The only downside to this card from, from the start is that you can only use it during the opponent's turn. Unless your opponent controls a monster with a special sound from a graveyard. What this means is, you cannot use it in your own turn. And you can use it at any time in the opponent's turn. Okay, that's a weird wording. Let me let me rephrase that. You can only use it at the opponent's turn. You can only use it in your turn if your opponent controls a monster or a special summon from the graveyard. So this card is bonkers because you only want to use it in the opponent's turn anyways. But what does it do? Archetrios. Well, you pay 800 life points, target one Exorcist monster you control, and summon one Exorcist Exist monster with a different name from the monsters you control by using that monster as material. So you can also use this on one of your Exorcist or Exist monsters and summon another one. Which means maybe you have, uh, with the effect of someone, you have summoned Caspatio. If your player can special summon monsters from a graveyard. Then you use that card and rank it up into Eusophio, which also makes a Abyss Dweller. Or you already use Mikhailis' uh, removal effect, you use that card to go into uh, into Caspatio to remove any possibility of your opponent summon something, summoning something from a graveyard. Or what you can also do is you can use it proactively. You can you can leave one of your basic uh, exorcisters on the field and use that quick spell, which you can also proactively search with Mikaelis, which is why this card is so good. Um, you can add it to your hand, set it, and then in the opponent's turn you can summon any of the three others. I mean, of course you miss out on the uh, on this effect because you cannot summon her for, with that. But you get either a negate, a, a graveyard lock for special summons, or a dweller. All of these are incredibly good, and you can change what you want, depending on what uh, what deck you play against. Because not every deck needs graveyard effects to summon stuff from a graveyard a lot. Not every deck needs to summon stuff from a graveyard, but also uh, but. Yeah, maybe needs to summon, uh, maybe needs to use graveyard effects a lot. So this is a great effect, and if you have, an, and if you play against a deck that does not use the graveyard at all, you can just go into a Jibreen and get a negate with that. So many possibilities of that one card, which is a generic rank 4. I love it. 
I love this toolbox kind of thing. Next up we've got Exosister Carpetable. Carpetable. Yeah, Carpetable, I think. Um First up, Exorcistor monsters you control can be targeted by monster effects or monsters that were special summoned from a graveyard, which is incredible. Then, if you exceed summon an Exorcistor monster, you can declare one card name. For the rest of the turn, you gain the activated effects and the effects of a field of cards with an original name. This is basically prohibition. And it's bonkers. Imagine you summon Mikaelis again. You had Carpet. You had Carpetipole in your hand, activated it beforehand, then before your fifth summon you summon uh, Mikaelis. Declare Nibiru. You're Nibiru proof. Just off that. Isn't that crazy? To be fair you need Carpetipole in your hand beforehand to do that. But just imagine the possibilities of such a prohibition. Especially if you can use it during the opponent's turn. Like, you would Definitely, in, an, in a pure build, you will definitely run free Exorcist or Memento. If you already have this on hand, and you search this, and during your opponent's turn you summon any Exorcist or Monster Exist monster, not only do, that, do you get their effect, but also you get, to, you get to make one card of your opponent's deck completely obsolete for a full turn. For example, imagine, imagine calling Dragon Ravine. Against uh, against something like Dragonlink, or even better, imagine calling. <sighs> what what can I use? I've been playing Dragonlink lately, and I still find it hard to find a real choke point. But Dragon Ravine is a very very essential card in the deck, so let's just go with Dragon Ravine there. But imagine calling that, or imagine imagine calling this this cat, this prank its cat. That's bonkers! I mean, they can still summon it, but no effects, mate! Uh, next up and last up, we've got Exorcist of Vardis, which is uh, somewhat also referred to as Buddies. You can pay 800 life points for the rest of this turn after this card resolves. You cannot special summon any monsters from the extra deck except Exorcist of Monsters. Also, you have to special summon two Exorcist of Monsters from the deck so that the first name uh, is listed as second text. So basically, either you summon uh, Elise and Stella, or you summon Elaine and Sophia. Which by itself is already really good. Because I think one of them had an, had an on summon? Oh no, none of them had an on summon. But still, you get that, and then your opponent does something with a graveyard, and you get to summon two Xyz monsters, just like that. You can literally chain Vardis. I, I believe that's how it can work. You can change Vardis to any interaction your opponent does with Graveyard. Special summon two Exorcist monsters. Of course, you cannot summon from the extra deck for the rest of this turn. But what are you going to summon from the extra deck anyways in your opponent's turn? So you summon both your Exorcisters, then immediately ramp them up into two different Xyz monsters. So you can ramp it up into uh, Kespetiel and Mikaelis, for example. And maybe then you still have uh, my favorite card, Mento. Honestly, not gonna lie. You see me rambling on and on and on about what this deck can potentially do. And I've actually opened up all the uh, all these things so that I can look at the art of it. Their art is top tier too. Cute girls doing cute things. I love my waifus, don't quote me on that. Generally speaking though, I am so goddamn hyped for this. Because this is actually very interesting, this might be my next Crystron. Because let's face it, this wants to play on the opponent's turn. This is basically Xyz Crystron. And I love it. I just love it, I want to play this. For sure. I see the potential in something you, some things you can do. If this deck turns out to be meta at some point, which... Depending on future support, or even on whatever happens to be meta at the time, it can happen. Technically. Because this could very well adapt in a very controlled playstyle. I think it's already controlled by nature. It is very controlled by nature, so it could be meta as a control deck. 
This is bonkers. I love it. But yeah, that's enough about me. Oh god, am I still alright? Yeah, I'm still alright. That's enough gush me gushing about cars that come out soon. But I wanted to get this out for today instead of Chrono Art because I saw this this morning and my mind was just absolutely blown a fucking way. But yeah. I I am looking forward to this archetype. Very much so. I hope you guys are maybe looking forward to it too. Maybe I'll do a video with this and Time Thieves. A Time Thief Exorcister Chaos deck would be incredibly funny to make. But until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Maybe i see you in a future video. Please tell me your thoughts about Exorcister if you actually watched this video. And uh, let's see you guys in whatever I decide to do next. Until then, bye bye.